right. I'm, uh, my name's Benny Reed. I'm 19 years old, and I'm at the Wabash Valley Correctional Facility in Carlisle, Indiana. Does it ever strike you when you say, I'm 19 years old, and I'm at Wabash? I mean, this is an adult maximum security prison. What's it like to be a teenager in a, in a place like this? Just stand by, please. Hold on one second. Go ahead. So what, what's it like being a teenager in a place like this? Um, I guess you can never really get used to it, you know what I mean? But uh, you just got to adjust your lifestyle and stuff, fit the uh, way the prison works and stuff. And you just have to live with it, you know what I mean, day by day and stuff. So. So could you ever, in your wildest dreams, back when you were 15 or 16 or 17, could you ever have imagined yourself ending up in a place like this? Um, no. I was pretty much, you know, just stuck to myself, stuff on the street and stuff, so I never imagined I'd end up in prison or, you know what I mean, commit a criminal act or nothing. Do you, were you ever in any trouble as a juvenile? Or do you remember when anything started happening that made you start thinking differently? Um, not really. I never had no criminal history or nothing. You know what I mean? Just went out and made a mistake. <laughs> Did you hear that scratches? You know, fix that? Can you hear you scratch? Yeah, I just heard scratch on that. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was going to go to the computer. It's about time. Hey, so, it was not a show stuff. Yeah, it was a show stuff. Well, yeah, it was uh, unacceptable. Uh, you just worry about your camera and your white balance and using these Christmas lights for lights. That's all. <laughs> this is just in. What was Valley today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not in a brawl. We've got the exclusive <laughs> video. <laughs> Live at five. Oh, we would have had to stop anyways because of that noise because we're shooting with the door open. Yeah, it's far open. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Good. So we were just talking about, were, were you ever in trouble as a juvenile? You know, a lot of the kids we talked to have spent kind of a lifetime in juvenile detention or placement. Were you ever in trouble as a juvenile? No, I've never had a juvenile record of any kind. Never been in trouble with the authorities or nothing. So. Does that make it even harder, do you think, to finally, I mean, the fact that you never had been in trouble before and you go from nothing to being a teenager in an adult maximum security prison, I mean, that's pretty surreal. Yeah, I've, I grew up in the country and, you know, I've learned a lot of stuff in here and stuff. And uh, everything's different, you know what I mean? The whole lifestyle and stuff. Tell me about growing up in the country. Tell me about where you're from. Uh, in Indiana, you know, you farm and stuff. We had uh, two houses. One of them was a farm. And we sit there and, you know what I mean? Cleaned up animals and stuff, helped animals. Uh, so you had chickens with eggs and stuff. You just worked every day, grow a garden stuff, corn, you know, vegetables and stuff. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Just a lot of nature, you know what I mean? Go out in the woods and stuff. Pretty simple life. Yeah, simple lifestyle. <laughs> so how would you say you were as a child, like growing up? How would you describe yourself? As a child, I was more stuck to myself, you know what I mean, in school and stuff. I, I don't know, I like to read a lot and stuff, and I always was drawing or getting into some kind of project, you know what I mean? So I was pretty laid back, I think, as a child. And then you have a little brother, Blade, who is also here at Wabash. What was your relationship like with Blade growing up? Um, I think we as close as brothers, you know what I mean? We both still live in the same house and stuff, and We'd sit there and play games together and stuff, and you know what I mean? Um, just did things together, activities and stuff. So if you could describe Blade for somebody who hasn't met him before, how would you describe Blade? Um, I'd, I'd describe him as outgoing, you know what I mean? He's uh, got a lot of energy and stuff, but he's a, you know what I mean, good brother and stuff, fun to hang out with and stuff like that. So even though you're both here at Wabash, talk to us about whether or not you get to see each other and what that's like, since both of you are here, but does that even matter? Um, 
I have visited him once when he was in segregation. I visited him once uh, behind a no contact visit. And uh, that visit went well, you know what I mean? It was good to see each other. We hadn't seen each other for over a year or so. So that was all right. Other than that, we don't see each other because he's on uh, the, off the north side of the facility and he's in the juvenile uh, dorm. So then the juveniles and the adult offenders don't, you know, I mean, correspond or mix their movement. Do you think about him a lot? Uh, I think about him every once in a while, you know what I mean? wonder how he's doing, hoping he's staying out of trouble and stuff, so. Were you surprised to hear when you found out that he was in SAG? Is that, does that seem like the blade you know? No, he, it seems like he's changed a lot since the little time that we've not known each other. <laughs> uh, yeah, he seemed like he was pretty laid back. He used to have a little bit, you know, I'm like anger problems, stuff on the street, but I don't know, probably just the surroundings, you know what I mean, stuff, interaction with a bunch of people we don't know and stuff like that. So, if you go back in time for me and tell me what it was like, you found out you were going to be committed here to Wabash. So, what was that whole transport like going from the county jail, which is where I assume you were, right. and making the drive here to Wabash? What were you thinking? What were you feeling at that time? Can you take me back to that time? Uh, well, county, we, it was a small county, you know what I mean? There was like maybe 40 some inmates in it. Brown County is real small. And uh, see, on my way up here to Wabash Valley, I was just thinking about, you know, you think about everything in the movies you see, it's present in the movies and stuff. So you'd be expecting things like that, which present, you know, is really a lot different than movies portray it. So um, I was nervous though, you know what I mean? So how is it different than how it's portrayed in the movies? If you could describe it to someone who's never been inside a prison, how, how would you, uh, how would you describe that? Mm. I don't know. Prison's, a, it's mainly all about time, you know what I mean? It takes, time goes by real slow in here. Maybe on the street, it feels like every day in here is two or three days on the street. And, uh, you know what I mean? There's a lot of order in here. You follow rules and guidelines and stuff, and you have movements throughout the day. You do the exact same thing all day and stuff. And, uh, you know, nothing really interesting happens. That's different. You just do your time, you know what I mean? You sit in your cell for so long. You go to three child, or uh, three child movements. You have rec twice a day, so. So you said you were a little nervous on that drive. Can you um, describe what it was like when the van was actually coming in and kind of, were you overwhelmed <laughs> at that moment? Yeah, first thing I noticed was, you know, all the fences with the barbed bar wire and stuff, and the sun was gleaming on it, shining and stuff. <laughs> uh, I noticed the guard towers and stuff and all the buildings, you know. It was just a big facility, something I've never witnessed or been in before, you know what I mean? So. And did you think to yourself, I, I cannot believe this is happening to me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, never thought that would happen, you know what I mean? Have you ever really talked to anybody about what this whole experience has been like for you? Um, no, not really, you know what I mean? The other inmates I talked to, they're already here, you know what I mean? When I call my mom, you know, I tell her some stuff, how it is stuff, and, you know, try and put her mind at ease and stuff about how it is around here. 
So yeah, what does your what does your mom say? How does she feel? How's she doing? Um, she seems pretty good, you know what I mean? She was a little shooken when she realized two of her sons, you know what I mean, committed crime stuff. She never expected that, you know what I mean? So I'm sure it was pretty hard on her, but she's pretty coping with it, you know what I mean? Do you remember the first time you saw her after you were arrested? And um, yeah, she was actually there when I was arrested. And uh, she came seeing me uh, probably within the next week. She saw me when I was a little eligible to have visits in uh, county. And she visited me every week thereafter, continuously in county. Do you, do you look back now and think, what was I thinking? What was I doing? How did I, how did I ever get into this situation? Uh, yeah. I think about all the mistakes I've made, you know what I mean? If I would have did the opposite thing, then something I've did already, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, if I could go back and change a certain action I did or something. But yeah, I never expected. But I guess one thing led to another, you know what I mean? Was it just a lot of panic or fear or what, what happened? Um, during the crime, there was, you know what I mean, a lot of panic, fear, and I was intoxicated and stuff too, though. But, uh, yeah, things just got out of hand, you know what I mean? Did you even remember it? Did you, do you feel like you almost blacked out during all of it? You nah, I pretty much remembered it, you know what I mean? But when I, like I went to sleep and the next morning when I woke up, I had to remember for a second if it really happened, you know what I mean? I didn't know if it was all a dream or something. <laughs> so after, after it happened, you then went back home? Yes. You and Blade both went back home. Um, just like a normal night, and you went to bed, and you, you woke up in the morning. Were the police there instantly, or how did that happen? Um, no, the, there was an investigation stuff. They was looking for suspects and stuff, and, uh, you know, they had to gather information and witnesses and all that stuff. I'm not sure how it all works, but, uh, yeah, it happened in late in the year, you know what I mean? It took till the beginning of next year before I was, me and my brothers arrested, so. Did you live in fear every single day, knowing that there was a possibility they would? Yeah. I figured it'd only be a matter of time, you know what I mean? And I was, you know, nervous or always looking over my shoulder, paranoid and stuff, so. And so then what happened? One day you were at home, your mom was at home, and the police just showed up at the door? No, uh, they were sitting there over several months times they was investigating myself that I know of, I don't know about my brother, and they was, uh, you know, I mean, taking fingerprints and stuff and asking questions and if I've seen anything and stuff, and I just let it, I just was hoping it was just a normal investigation, you know what I mean? And uh, I went up to Indianapolis, I left my home, I was 17 at the time, I went up with, uh, stayed with my older brother in Indianapolis, and uh, they sit there and, you know, came just act like it was a normal routine and stuff, and, took me down to county stuff, said my mom was going to be there, and they just wanted to ask more questions, and then they arrested me on the spot there. After I got to county, my mom was there and stuff, so and then I guess they arrested my brother later when they went and worked, or a search warrant for the house and stuff. So you and Blade then were in the county jail at the same time? Um, I was in county jail, I think about eight months maybe, and uh, the whole time that I was there, he wasn't there, but the last week or two I was there, they moved him there, but I didn't see him any. I just seen him take him to a booking because I was in segregation at the time. And uh, they moved him back to the dorms and stuff, so we never talked to each other in county. Did you, at any time during that time, or even now, did you ever feel like, my life is over? What's, what goes through your mind? Well, first you think off that you're young, you know what I mean? And I've got 60 years to do 30 or 30 to years, 60 to 30. So, you know what I mean? That's 30 years of my life that I've wasted. And all I can hope is to uh, hopefully get an education and college degree and stuff and make up for that waste time, you know what I mean? And progress my life further. That way when I get on the streets, I will be prepared for to return to normal lifestyle. Do you ever stop to think about the fact that you're, you're 19, you're still a teenager, and that you're going to be that old by the time you get out, does that ever, or do you not let yourself go there? You know, you can't help think about it, because uh, all you got to do is, you've got a lot of time by yourself, you know what I mean, that you're thinking. All you got yourself to talk to, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you think about it, and uh, it's hard, you know what I mean? You just got to push forward every day, you know what I mean? 
and uh, just look for the idea that you might get out one day or something. I mean, I just can't imagine someone who's never been locked up, who's never been in the system, you know, to suddenly one day find themselves here. It just is almost indescribable for someone to, to be able to, to understand. Yeah. It's very unbelievable for myself, you know what I mean? And I'm sure for my family and stuff, because I don't think they've ever seen me or my brother, you know, capable of anything like that. And, uh, you know, at any moment, anything could change, you know what I mean? And I guess it could happen to anybody. It's just about the choices you make and what you do while you're out there. So if you were going to talk to other kids who are out there who would think like you did years ago that, oh, this could never happen to me, I would never do anything like that, how, how does it happen? How, how do you go from nothing to 100 in a matter of a night? Uh, it's about making choices like I was uh, expelled from school for, you know what I mean, getting in trouble and stuff. Nothing against the law, you know what I mean? Just you start off by, you know what I mean, not paying attention in school, getting your education and stuff, and maybe acting up at home or something. And then, you know, just going out with the idea that you're invincible or something and maybe doing drugs or drinking or something. And then one thing will lead to another, and next thing you know, you're robbing a house or stealing a car or something, you know what I mean? So you were, you were drunk the night that yes. happened? Did you ever during that time like feel responsible for Blade because he was so much younger than you? Did it ever dawn on you at the time, you know, oh my God, my little brother's here? Yeah, that's, that's one of the hardest things to cope with, you know what I mean? Because I know it's my responsibility. He looked up to me, being I was his big brother and stuff, and uh, I led him wrong down the road, you know what I mean? Thought it was all right to take him with me on, uh, I don't know, just things we went and did and stuff, because I didn't want to leave him out. But at the same time, I see now that, you know what I mean, it's my fault and stuff. And I just hope he, you know, forgives me in the long run or something, and that he gets out one day. How, d how does he react to you when you get the few times you've been able to see him? How, is he happy to see you? How does he react to you? Um, I don't know. He seems like he's happy to see me to me. Uh, you know, we just talk every time we see each other. We just talk like, you know what I mean? Just like normal brothers, I guess, would ask him how he's doing and stuff, and same here, you know what I mean? So tell me how long you've been here now. Mm, I've been at Wabash since October of 09. So. Not quite two years. No. I've only been locked up probably a little over two years, total, including county time and RDC time and stuff, so. Does it feel like two years or does it feel like 20 years that you've been Nah, it feels like I've been in prison longer than I've been on the street, you know what I mean? Time goes by a lot slower in here and hard to get used to, you know what I mean? Sure, it hurts and harder in other places on the arm. I, uh, I can do it. I'm a big chicken when it comes to you know. It's a pretty fancy one. Yeah. Yes. When, oh my gosh, you have it all. Oh my gosh, you have it all the way. Yep. How long did it take? Mm, I don't know, maybe 15 hours or so total. We're good. Okay. So we were. I'm going to ask you this again because the phone rang last time, but. Does it feel like you've been here two years or 20 years at this point? Uh, I'd say more, at least around 10 years, you know what I mean? Uh, it's going to be hard to fan them doing another, you know what I mean, 28 years or whatever. I'm hoping to get some of that reduced by uh, education and college degrees and programs that's available here at Wabash. So. Are you afraid of, you know, I don't know if you've heard guys talk about this, about being institutionalized, that once you've been in prison for so long, you just start to feel like, Prison is your life, period. Um, I'm not really afraid of being institutionalized because I feel like I'm not going to let myself become institutionalized. You know what I mean? I'm going to always have that hope that I'll be back on the street and in society again. Uh, the only thing I fear maybe is how much the world will change between those 30 years, you know what I mean? Like, what kind of cars will there be? How everything will work? I've never drove a car, so I don't know, you know what I mean? That'll be a whole new learning experience for everything out there that I ain't did yet. 
Do you stop to think about all the things you're missing that normal teenagers are doing? Does that kind of weigh on your mind? Um, yeah, it does every day. If you could kind of just say, you know, I think every day I think about what I'm missing. Oh. Every day I think about what I'm missing. Driving and, you know. Uh, I'll fast out. Oh, no, that's good. Uh, yeah, every day I think about what I'm missing, driving, and, uh, you know, having that job, being employed, never had a job. Um, just everything kids do, you know, getting my high school diploma and stuff. I could still do it here, but it won't still be the same as going through all my years of school and stuff, you know what I mean? Do you, do you miss your friends? I mean, what, what happened with any friends when all this happened? Um, my friends, not, my friends pretty much did at school, you know what I mean? They didn't come over to the house and stuff. Wasn't real active. I just made, I had uh, seven brothers and sisters. So we always just, you know what I mean? Did everything together and stuff with my other brothers and sisters. And we lived out there in the middle of nowhere in the country, you know what I mean? So we was always playing sporting events and stuff like that within the family. I had no idea you had seven brothers and sisters. I didn't know that. Yep. So how's this been for all your brothers and sisters? Do you know? Um. I don't know. My, they write me still, you know what I mean? We keep contact their letters and stuff. And my, uh, my real sister, she came up and visited me with my uh, mom and my, one of my adopted sisters, so it's all good. So how is it when you, first of all, how many visits have you received and how often do you get them since you've been here? Well, I've only had one visit, but I've also had disciplinary. I've lost my visits for disciplinary reasons and stuff. And I'll probably be receiving their visit as soon as they, my uh, six months is up. So. so you've been here almost two years, and you've only had one visit. Does that make you sad? Is that hard to take? Yeah, it's pretty hard. You know, I mean, you, uh, I'm, you know, I miss my family and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's pretty hard. <laughs> So, it, after all this happened, um, was your family, as far as you know, as in support of you as they could be? I mean, did they, as far as they're concerned, for your mom, you're still her son, and no matter, you know, what's said about you or written about you? Um, yes, yeah, she told me in county, uh, the first time we visited and stuff, she said that she was always going to be there and support me, you know what I mean? And she was uh, going to stick by me no matter what happened over the years, so. What would you want people on the outside to know about you? Because I know your case became a high-profile case. And so all people know about you, hopefully until now, when they can actually hear from you directly, all people know about you is what they've read about you in the paper. Right. So what do you think people think of you on the outside versus who you really think you are? Um, first thing I think is I think they probably think, you know I mean? I was a big troublemaker as a kid. You know what I mean? Going out, robbing all the time, and like some, you know what I mean? Children are raised and stuff in cities and stuff, but out in the country, you know what I mean? Uh, you was pretty much secluded by yourself, and there wasn't a lot of criminal activity or influence around you or nothing. So. So you think they thought you were like a constant menace and. Probably. <laughs> but you never really were that. No. And and after the news hit, um, I mean, do they? Do you think that people look at you as some cold-blooded killer, or what do you think um, that they think of you? It's hard to say. Uh, I mean, the people, of course, that know me know different, but uh, I think other people in society, and especially around my county and stuff, probably think of me as, you know what I mean, a cold-blooded murderer or whatever. But, uh, you know, if they knew me or whatever, or got a chance to talk to me, they'd know different. And uh, I'm just pretty laid back, you know what I mean? I, Try not to get any fights or anything, and pretty much try to stick to myself, you know what I mean? Is there anything um, that, that you would want anybody involved with your case to know? I mean, did you, did you ever have a chance to say you were sorry to anyone or, or be offered that opportunity? Um, I was offered the opportunity in my county during my, uh, during my sentencing. I was allowed to read a a uh, statement. statement to the victims and society and stuff, but 
I believe it wasn't accepted. I'm not sure how it worked, but the lawyer or uh, the uh, prosecutor, somebody said like that he waived it or something. So I don't know how that works, but yeah, I'd just like the uh, victims of the family to know that I am sorry. And if I could take that back, I would take it back. And it was nothing personal, you know what I mean? It was just stupid kid making stupid mistakes, you know what I mean? And uh, then my family and my community, I'd like to say thank you to all, or uh, thank you. Uh, sorry to all them and stuff. And uh, my brother, I just hope he forgives me and stuff too, so. Is this something that um, you go to bed with every night and wrestle with every night in your mind, trying to um, get through it? No, I wouldn't say every night. I mean, I'll have my nights throughout the week or whatever, you know, that I'll be thinking about mainly the time, how much time there is over my head and stuff, so. And uh, just about what things could have changed or whatever. Or, and I mainly think about things that I didn't do that I wish I'd have done, you know what I mean? Something I might have been too afraid to attempt or go out there and just put myself forward to do, you know what I mean? So you can't really point to anything in your past that would have made you end up doing what you did that night? Um, I don't know, I'm sure every family's got their hardships and stuff. Like me and my brother and my sister, we was put through several foster families and stuff. And, you know, I mean, my, uh, my mom and dad, they was both arrested and we was taken from them by Child Protective Services and stuff as a young kid and stuff. And uh, I don't know, that might have led something, I don't know. I saw child therapist stuff as a child, me and my brother and my sister did. But uh, we was adopted into a pretty good family, you know what I mean? So, so you're all three adopted? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. So how old, do you know how old you were when you were adopted as a, um, as a baby? Or? No, I was, think I was about eight years old, I was, and uh, my brother, Blake, he was four years old. And then my sister, she was, uh, I think, about six, seven. So you were three biological right. uh, children, and you were all three adopted by your family now, your mom and, and dad that you have now? Um, yeah. And then they, did they end up? So you were in foster care up until you were adopted, or you were adopted and then you were in foster care after that? Um, no, we was in foster care. We went through several houses first. Then we went, was, went to the foster family that we're or, uh, currently was adopted by. Okay. And we stayed with them for so long and you know, got a fill of things and decided, we had the decision to decide if we wanted to be adopted by them okay. in court. And we all three agreed to be adopted. I didn't know you were adopted. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my uh, real dad, he has, I have two step, or I have a stepbrother and a stepsister, and on my mom's side, there ain't nothing, I don't think she has any children. And I hadn't talked to my real mom or uh, dad for 10 years while I was adopted. Don't Yeah, because my mom was addicted real bad to drugs and stuff. And, We were just talking about the fact that you were adopted. So, in your early years, all the way up until about age eight, you actually saw probably a lot as a child because your your biological, at least mom, you said, right, right. had some drug issues. Right? Yeah, she had uh, drug issues. I'm not sure which ones because we were young at the time, but uh, it was enough to affect. And uh, I know we had never had no food in the house or nothing, and you know, dirty clothes and stuff. We grew up in a Bloomington. As a, as a child, I was born in Bloomington. And uh, yeah, so it was enough to get notice of Child Protection Services, and they came and took us. And my mom and my dad were separated before, by then. So. so then from there, you went into foster care, a couple of different foster homes? Yeah, at least two or three foster homes, maybe more. I can't remember. It's been a while. <laughs> Did you ever have any contact with your biological mom and dad after you were taken away from them? Um, Right after we was taken away from them for, uh, I don't know, maybe a month or two, maybe a little longer, I don't know. We ha I had visits with my mom. She was in some kind of rehab program or something. But eventually, for I don't know what reason, that was stopped. 
and uh, for at least nine, ten years, we didn't, hadn't seen uh, our real mom or our real dad or had any contact with them in any sort of way, you know what I mean? So we was pretty secluded and kept from them. And they both reached me in county when they saw my information on uh, TV, you know what I mean? They both sit there and uh, wrote me and called me and stuff like that, or gave me their number and I called them. Really? Yeah. So what did they say? How did that go? Uh, it was, uh, I first received a letter from my dad and, you know what I mean? At first I had to look at the name two or three times because my dad's got my same name as me and I had to see it. I didn't know what, you know what I mean? And uh, that was a pretty moving moment for me because I hadn't heard from him for a while. And uh, he was just asking, you know, pretty much for forgiveness and telling me what happened and stuff. And uh, then I got a letter from my mom next and she was sitting there asking me for forgiveness and stuff and that she had a lot of her own demons to take care of, you know what I mean? Drugs and stuff she had to fight. And uh, so I believe they was both in prison, I'm not sure, at some time over things that happened. But uh, Do you think they feel responsible for where you are now? Um, I'm sure they do blame themselves, but you know, I don't see it as that way. I see it was my own mistakes and stuff. I could have had any kind of life I wanted to live out there, and I chose to go, you know what I mean, drink and stuff like that, so. Do you remember your time in the child welfare system very vividly, or is that a distant memory? Um, it's more of a blurry, distant memory, you know what I mean? Uh, I remember, like, some kind of building or something that we'd sit there and go and we'd talk with counselors and stuff, and then they'd put us through, like, we'd stay with a temporary home until they matched us up with foster family we could go stay with. And uh, we, I think we transported to two or three, maybe four uh, foster families at the time. And were you all always together, the three of you always yes. went to the same foster family? Yes, we was always stuck together, which I'm, you know, grateful for and stuff. Do you feel like you m missed out on a childhood because of all that? Do you ever think about that? Um, yeah, I'd say I had a different childhood than a lot of kids, and uh, yeah, I feel like I missed out a lot of things, you know what I mean? Like, you know, going to friends' houses and stuff, and just everything a kid does. But uh, I've always had my brother and sister there with me, you know what I mean? So that's been a little bit easier. How's your sister been through all of this? Um, I'm sure she's pretty shaken. She didn't tell me, but she's writing and stuff, you know what I mean? Being supportive and stuff. She's, uh, she just turned 18 not too long ago, you know what I mean? So she's uh, doing good. So she's not in the, in the system at all? No, she's never been in trouble uh, with the uh, justice system in any way. So if you had to describe to people who might be watching this um, how you get through a day in adult prison when you're 17 and you know you still have a long time ahead to serve, what would you tell them? How do you get through? I'd say just uh, have a hope, you know what I mean, and keep pushing forward towards that hope. Like, you could always better yourself within the facility and uh, always get yourself out. You just have to study and, you know what I mean, get your education and stuff and just don't give up that hope, you know what I mean? Just go day to day. What would you want to say to any judges that a big part of what we're doing with this show is looking at the issue of teenagers being sentenced as adults and being placed in adult correctional facilities? What would you want judges to know about the reality of what their sentencing means to kids like you? Um, well, I'd say uh, that they should take into consideration more the background of a child, a, a child's childhood, you know what I mean? Take that more into consideration stuff before they give a sentence or wave to an adult system. And uh, also that, uh, you know, I mean, I don't believe prison systems are a place for children, that they would not be more uh, liable, able, let's see, liable to uh, rehabilitate themselves because there's a lot more negative influence in here among the inmates themselves and stuff. If you could talk to uh, decision makers and politicians and um, people in the legal system, can you think of anything that you would think would work, that, you know, that could be um, 
instead of sentencing a kid to adult prison, you know, why don't you do this with teenagers who get in trouble or who have these offenses? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think there should be, you know, boys school. I'm not. I've never been to one, so I don't know how that runs. But uh, depending on the offense and stuff, you know, instead of like simple drug charge or something, they need to be rehabilitated into maybe a, some kind of rehab or something, or they just need to be talked to by counselors or something. And they need to be given more attention because I'm sure a lot of children become mixed up in the criminal activities from not giving it being given enough attention by parents or their peers or, you know, just counselors or outside influence. If you could, uh, if you could turn back the clock and start all over again, what would you want your life to be like? What could you imagine your life being like if you could start all over? If you could start by just saying, "If I could start all over." If I could start all over with my uh, life, I would, uh, I would hopefully see myself, you know, with finishing school and not ever getting in trouble in school and ended up dropping out and. I'd have been a more positive influence for my brother and my other siblings, and uh, would have just tried to keep them going and push them, you know, and hopefully had a job and stuff, and been progressing in life, you know what I mean? Do you, would you say you, you have a feeling of guilt? Um, do, you have, do you feel like you have to live with that sense of guilt? Um, yeah, there's a lot of guilt, you know what I mean? I have to sit there and uh, I know that I'm responsible for anything that happens to end up here, so you just have to try and keep going, you know I mean, live with it. If we were to come back and film with you the day you leave prison, who's the Benny Reed we would see the day we watch you walk out of prison? Uh, <laughs> If we were to come back the day that you're released from prison, who's the Benny Reed that we would see walking out of prison? Uh, well, it'd be a lot different, you know what I mean? Because I, uh, I would know that you can't just go out there and do whatever you want, you know what I mean? That you will be caught by the law and stuff, so I would definitely be putting a lot of thought into any action that I took, you know what I mean? And, uh, I'd just be happy, be out of course, and, uh, you know what I mean, be reunited with my family. So it'd be a lot different and improved Benny, <laughs> and uh, be trying to lay below the law, you know what I mean? Any final thoughts? Um, just that, uh, you know, try and make positive choices in your life, and. Or you'll end up here, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Any thoughts? Just, you know, make positive. Security prison is this. It's like in the movies, we'll go, take three. <laughs> All right. Ready? So, final thoughts? Uh, just try and make positive choices while you still got your freedom, you know what I mean? And don't give it up, come here. 
not play shoe on a spin the rest of your life, you know what I mean?